Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Tuesday, April 27th. We were working the day watch out of juvenile division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Powers. My name's Friday. We got a call from one of the richest neighborhoods in the city. One of the residents reported a 10-year-old boy and his sister were going from door to door begging for food. We had to find out why. Just what I was telling you on the phone. A ten-year-old boy and his sister covering the neighborhood, begging for food. You ready to go? Yeah. You arrange for a police woman? Just did. Kids are supposed to come from a wealthy family. Huh? Enough money to live in the best part of town. Doesn't make sense. Sounds like a gag. Not according to the neighbor who phoned in. Yeah. He says the kids are half starved. <laughs> Frank and I drove out to a mansion in one of the wealthiest parts of town. The other homes in the neighborhood were just as large, $50,000 and up. It was the last place in the city that you'd expect to find neighborhood children begging for food. Three twenty p.m. We went around to the rear entrance of the mansion. We located the woman who'd called in the complaint, a Miss Jeanette Behan. She was employed as a laundress and cook by the owners of the house. They are from the house next door offices. The children, as I explained on the phone, a boy about ten years, a girl oh six years old, I guess. Which side do they live on, Miss Behan? The house on the corner? No, the other side, up here, brown and white house. Are the children there now? Do you know? No, but they were here this afternoon again, here to the back door, asking for something to eat. I do not understand it. Something must be wrong. Have they been around often, Miss Behan? Two or three days. Maybe four days. At first, I thought they were fooling. But they were not. I gave them cookies, sandwiches. They were very hungry. They ate like they were starving. The little girl saved their cookies. She took them home with her. How about their parents? Are they home now? Excuse me. The potash. Yes, ma'am. No. I have not seen the mother the last few days. I understand they are divorced. The mother, she lives there with the children. The father, I don't know. What's their name, do you know? Kessler. Madame, the woman I work for, she says there are three children in the Kessler family. I don't know. I only have seen two of them, the boy and the girl. I would go over and see what is wrong. But I do not know the Kesslers. It is not my place. That's why I called you, officer. Yes, ma'am, I see. You understand. I do not mind giving the children food. I think only something is wrong if they do not get it at all. Well, thanks very much for notifying us, Miss Behan. We'll look into it right away. I'm just curious, Miss Behan, but what's that you're making there? This? Napoleon. What's that? Napoleon. Do you know? Napoleon pastry. Oh, sure. Smells good, doesn't it? Thanks again, ma'am. Certainly, officer. If there is something I can do, will you let me know? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye ma'am. You know, it's funny, Joe. What's that? Those Spanish women make fine cooks, don't they? Spanish? Yeah. They sounded Viennese to me. Oh, sure. <laughs> French pastry. Kessler. It's 
prominent society? I don't know. There's a lot of them around. Could be. Want to try it again? Yeah. Your name's Kessler? Yeah, I'm Richard. My mother's not home. Maybe we can come back tomorrow. We're police officers, son. I'd like to come in and talk to you if it'd be all right. Yeah, I guess that's all right. Would you come in, please? Thank you. Richard was polite, well-mannered. He told us he was 10 years old and that he attended the neighborhood grammar school. The house was cold and musty. Looked like it hadn't been cleaned in weeks. boy showed us back to the kitchen where he was warming a can of soup that he'd borrowed from a neighbor. What do you want to talk to me about, officer? I haven't done anything wrong. We know that, son. We'd just like to find out how you've been getting along. Oh, I've been getting along all right. I got two A's and four B's on my report card last month. Mm-hmm. Where's your sister, Dick? Judy? Oh, she's just down the street. She'll be back in a minute. Well, how about your mother? Where's she? Oh, she's out, too. She'll be back. When do you expect her, son? Pretty soon. She'll be coming back pretty soon. Now, your sister Judy, she's younger than you are, isn't she, Dick? Yeah, she's six. I'm ten. Any other grown-ups live here with you besides your mother? No, Mom takes care of us. She'll be coming back pretty soon. I'd like to have you tell us the truth on this, son. How long has she been gone? I don't know. It's probably important. It's taken her a long time. If you come back tomorrow, she'll probably be here. When's the last time you saw her, son? Son, how about it? A couple days ago. Well, this is Tuesday. You mean she left the house Sunday? No, last Friday night she went out. She said she'd be back. I don't know. Did she say where she was going, son? No, but her boyfriend was here, Larry. I don't know his last name. She went out with him to a party, I think. I don't know. She'll be back all right. Did she leave anyone to take care of you? No, we could take care of ourselves. Nobody fixed the cooking, though. Yeah, I better take a look at that, too. I'll get it, son. Has your mother ever gone off like this and left you before, son? Maybe once or twice. She never stayed away this long, though. What's the matter, son? Oh, it's Johnny, officer. Johnny hasn't eaten very much. He must be hungry by now. I was fixing the soup for him. Where is Johnny? In the nursery. He's got a bad cold. Mom knew Johnny was sick. That's why I've been wondering she hasn't been back yet. I don't think Johnny's feeling well. Well, how long has he had this cold, son? A couple days before Friday, before Mom left. <laughs> how old is he? Oh, Johnny? He's just a little kid. He won't be two years old till July. I've been wondering about him. At first, he coughed a lot. I've been feeding him milk and potato chips, same as Judy and I have. I don't know. Mind if we take a look at him, son? Yeah, all right, if you want. doctor been out to see your brother? No, I thought of calling him, but I don't know the doctor's name. I was waiting until Mom got home. This is Johnny's from here. Would you come in, please? Sure. Look at the doctor. That's my brother Johnny. It's cold in here. Yeah. Let's have a look here. Hi, Johnny. You hungry now? I think he's asleep, son. Oh. Sure. his eyes. Yeah, better get mad to us. Tell him to hurry. Right. What's the matter, officer? What about Johnny's eyes? He'll be all right, son. He's been acting awful quiet, hardly moving around at all. Most of the time, he's jumping around the crib like anything. Has anyone at all been in here to see him since Friday? Yes, sir. My sister Judy and I. We change his diapers and give him something to eat. I see. Gee, I wish Mom would get home. I'd sure like to talk to her. Yes, son, so would I. p.m. We put in a call to the office for a policewoman. Then we got in touch with Ray Pinker at the crime lab, and he sent out a man to photograph the condition of the Kessler home and the children. The ambulance arrived, and little Johnny Kessler was taken to the general hospital in a critical condition. The 22-month-old boy was in a coma. Richard Kessler and his sister Judy were taken to Georgia Street Juvenile Division and then transferred to Juvenile Hall. They were placed under protective custody, Section 700 Sub B, Welfare and Institution Code. 
They were held at Juvenile Hall, Lathrop Cottage, segregated from the delinquent juveniles in the adjoining building. Richard and Judy were given a bath and something to eat. Judy was interrogated separately by a policewoman. Frank and I talked to the boy, Richard. After a few minutes, he broke down and admitted that his mother had gone off and left the children alone on at least a half a dozen occasions. He told us his parents were divorced. He rarely saw his father, but his mother had had two or three boyfriends at the house during the past year. He also told us that his mother drank quite a bit. But she's never been gone this long, officer. Maybe she's out somewhere and had no way to get home. We'll find her, all right, son. Don't you worry about it. Now, this boyfriend of your mother's son, his first name's Larry. Is that all you can tell us? Yes, sir. I don't know his last name. Are you going to keep us here all night, Judy and I? Well, it's just for a day or so, son. They'll take good care of you. Where'd they take Judy? She's right next door. You can see her in a minute. I'd like to see her right now if I could. I'm worried about her. All right, son. I'll see what I can do. Now, how about my brother, Johnny? I'd like to take care of myself if I could. He gets pretty fussy around strangers. Well, they've got him over at the hospital, son. They'll take good care of him. You can count on that. I don't know, officer. He gets pretty fussy. All right, we'll see if we can fix that up for you, too. Now, there's one thing I'd like to know, Dick. Do you have any relatives in Los Angeles? Any aunts, uncles, anyone like that? No, just my father. But I don't know where he lives. A nurse used to take care of us, Mrs. McIntosh. She was swell. But Mom fired her. Oh, well, how'd that happen, would you know? No, I don't know. Maybe Mom was drinking. Miss McIntosh got mad at her. They had a big fight. Then Mom fired her. Well, this Mrs. McIntosh. Do you know where you can find her? No, sir, I don't. Now, how about the other boyfriends your mother had, Dick? Do you remember any of their names? No, one of them was George something. I don't remember the other one. Joe? Yeah. See a minute? Sure. Excuse me, I'll be right back, son. The hospital just called. It's a rotten shame. What's that? The Kessler boy, little Johnny? Yeah. He just died. John Albert Kessler, white male American, age 22 months. All the pertinent facts and data would be listed on the crime report. If and when the case was closed, the report would be filed away wouldn't be any different from a thousand other dead body reports. The same size, the same color, the same number in the lower left-hand corner. In the course of 10 or 20 years on the job, a police officer sees a lot of them. Most of them he forgets. A few of them he never forgets. The next morning, the body was posted at the county morgue. It was found that the youngster had been suffering from malnutrition. The cause of death was due to a basal skull fracture. Homicide detail was notified. The search for the mother, Mrs. Jean Kessler, went on. We talked to her neighbors, all her friends that we could locate. We checked out an address book we found in Mrs. Kessler's personal effects. No luck. We got out a broadcast and an APB. Thursday, April 29th. Anything? Another blank. I'm just thinking, Joe, the two kids, Richard and Judy... You think it might have happened that way? What do you mean? Well, they were taking care of little Johnny. They might have had an accident with him and afraid to tell us. Well, it's a possibility. Better chance it was somebody else, though. A mother? Well, we know Mrs. Kessler drinks quite a bit. She could have lost patience with the little fellow. More chance of an accident there, don't you think? Yeah. Juvenile Friday. Oh, yeah. How are you, Bert? You did, huh? What was that? I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You bet it does. Thanks very much, Bert. Bye. Might be something. Yeah. Woman answering Mrs. Kessler's description checked into a hotel on South Hope last night. Still registered? Checked out early this morning. She left a sport coat in the room. Yeah. Blood stains on it. Friday, April 30th. We were still without a lead to the whereabouts of the missing mother, Mrs. Jean Kessler. The blood-stained coat which had been found in the South Hope Street Hotel was shown to Mrs. Kessler's friends. They identified it as belonging to the missing woman. We showed the coat to Mrs. Kessler's children, Richard and Judy. They recognized it as belonging to their mother. Routine investigation of the hotel room failed to uncover any further leads. We got out a supplementary APB and then we started rechecking with the Kessler woman's friends and acquaintances. We found nothing. 
We inquired at a dozen taverns and cocktail lounges that she'd been known to frequent. No sign of her. No sign of her boyfriend. In rechecking her personal effects, we found a canceled check to their former nurse, a Mrs. McIntosh. The endorsement carried her address. We checked it out. She'd moved. We traced her to her forwarding address. There, we were told that she had a new job as a nursemaid with a family living in the Los Feliz district. We called there and talked to Mrs. McIntosh. She told us that she was just leaving the house with two of the children for an outing in Griffith Park. We made arrangements to meet with her there. One fifty-five p.m., we located Mrs. McIntosh in the Griffith Park Zoo. I read about it in the paper, Sergeant, about Johnny. I didn't know you wanted to talk to me. I would have called in if I did. We're still trying to locate the mother, Mrs. McIntosh. Can you help us out there? I don't know. Have you asked of those places she used to go to all the time, where she used to drink? Yes, ma'am, we have. They couldn't help us. Did you know any of Mrs. Kessler's boyfriends, the ones that came to the house? Yes, I knew all of them. Donald, don't you wander off now. Same for you, Patsy. Stay close. Now, the boy Richard was telling us about one of the boyfriends, ma'am. Name's Larry. Oh, yes. Donald, you heard what I said. Stay close. Yes, I knew that, Larry. Do you remember what his last name was, ma'am? Yes, uh, Carpenter. Some kind of an actor in the movies, I think. Larry Carpenter. You know where he lives? No. I think he had an apartment in Hollywood. I wouldn't know the address. What kind of a man is this Carpenter? I mean, his temperament, things like that. Lazy. I don't know how much money Mrs. Kessler spent on him. Did the two of them ever argue? Did he ever have any fights, would you know? All the time. He had a terrible temper. Did he ever strike Mrs. Kessler? Oh, yes. I saw it happen several times. How did this carpenter act toward the children, Mrs. McIntyre? Indifferent, I guess. They annoyed him sometimes. Lord only knows what happened after I left. And that was after you had the argument with Mrs. Kessler? Yes. It was about her drinking and her boyfriends and all the rest. I just got sick of it. I told her what I thought. She just wouldn't admit she was getting old. Not caring for the children, pretending she was still in her 20s. Do you have any idea where we might locate the father? Well, they're divorced, you know. He's a head salesman for a lumber concern downtown. He inherited most of his money. I have the name of the company at home. You can have it if you like. Thank you very much. We'd appreciate it. It's the children I feel sorry for, not her. Yes, ma'am. Three beautiful children and the way she treated them. Poor Johnny. Poor baby. I just can't understand it. Ma'am. Johnny. I mean to go off and desert a helpless baby, her own baby. What reason could she have to do that? I don't know, ma'am, but it better be a good one. Friday, 4 p.m. Mrs. McIntosh called us at the office and gave us the business address of the missing woman's ex-husband, Richard Lane Kessler. We went there to see him, but they told us that Kessler was away on a week's vacation. They had no idea where to contact him, but he was expected back in a few days. We called Central Casting and asked them to check their talent list for an actor by the name of Larry Carpenter. They had no such name listed. Saturday, May 1st, the Kessler children, Richard and Judy, remained in the custody of juvenile authorities. The search for their mother continued. Inquiries at the morgue, the city hospitals, and the drunk tank at the main jail still failed to turn up the missing woman. We checked again at the different places he used to patronize. No one had seen her. 4.30 p.m., we checked in at the office. A lot of mileage today. Yeah, we haven't got much to show for it, have we? No. Not going to be much fun for those Kessler kids next Sunday. Why? What do you mean? Second Sunday in May. What about it? Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks. That's a good piece of news. What's that? Kessler Woman's boyfriend, Larry Carpenter. Yeah. Says he saw his name in some of the stories that broke in last night's papers. Doesn't want us to consider him a fugitive. Yeah. Says he'll be at his club all day today. Let's go. Says here not to disturb him unless we think it's important. Frank and I located Larry Carpenter in his club, back 
in one of the card rooms. Now, look, I told that cop when I called in, you weren't supposed to contact me here unless it was important. That little Kessler boy is dead, Carpenter. We think that's pretty important. But I don't know anything about that. You didn't have to interrupt me. That's an important man I was playing with. What do you want to know? Where's Miss Kessler? Why ask me? I don't know. You're a pretty good friend of hers. You were the last person seen with her. That was a week ago. Went out to a party last Friday night. I haven't seen her since the following Monday. Yeah, last Monday. I'm through with her anyway. What do you mean? Well, I got sick of her, that's all. Pawing all over me, asking me to marry her. I just got sick of her. It wasn't worth it. You took money from her? Yeah, a little bit to tide me over. She had plenty. Why not? Where'd you last see her? I can give you the address, but but keep your voices down, will you? I wouldn't like this stuff to get around the club. Were you at another hotel with Mrs. Kessler last week? Yeah, on South Hope, around 9th Street, I think. That's where you found her coat, huh? What do you got to say about that? The blood stains? Sure. Crazy dame. I told her I was through with her, and she tried to hit me with a bottle. Cut herself. I tell you, it just wasn't worth it, that's all. Yeah, well, I guess you can prove everything you're telling us, huh? Of course I can prove it. It's the truth. What about the little boy? How'd that happen? I didn't have anything to do with it. It wasn't my fault. How'd it happen? It was that Friday night just before we left the house. The old lady and I were having a few drinks. She put the little kid to bed, but he wouldn't stay there. He kept getting out of bed and pestering us. All right, go on. Well, she finally took the kid, gave him a good spanking, and threw him back in bed. I think he hit his head on one of the posts in the crib. Why didn't you do something about it? I told her, but she said it was nothing. It didn't matter. We got her coats and left, that's all. Kids were all right when we left. You mean all the times you and Mrs. Kessler went out? You knew those children were left alone in that house, huh? Yeah, well, she's the mother, not me. Now, look, I kept this game waiting long enough. Yeah, well, it's going to wait a little longer. Come on. Larry Carpenter was taken downtown and held for questioning on suspicion of murder. He gave us the address of the hotel where he'd last seen Mrs. Kessler. Frank and I checked out the address. The desk clerk told us that a woman answering Mrs. Kessler's description was registered in a room on the second floor. Boy, they sure like their music here, don't they? Yeah. On July 2nd, trial was held in Department 87, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was tried and convicted of manslaughter, which is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period not to exceed 10 years. The Kessler children were placed in foster homes.